You didn't really expect to get away with a thing like that, did you? Frankly, officer, I didn't. Then why try it? You don't care about yourself, think about other people. Driving through traffic at 50 miles an hour. Traffic? You? Oh, I'm sorry, officer. Now, you keep it up and this will be the last New Year's you'll ever see. Unpleasant thought, isn't it? Isn't it, though? Okay, go ahead, but take it easy. I don't want to hand out any tickets tonight unless I have to. Something wrong, Mr. Boss? No. You going to spend New Year Eve alone? Yeah. You want Chang to stay? Maybe mix drink? Keep you company? No, just close the door from the outside. Chang do something wrong? You wish him unhappy New Year? All right. Happy New Year, Chang. Good night. No hurry. It's all right. Chinese New Year not for a long time yet. Department. My name is George McAllister. I live at 150 West 59th. I just killed... I just killed a man. You'll find his body at Rossmore Apartments. East 7th. Apartment 14. What's that? He's quite dead. My dear George, I should have known sooner that the hate that you bore your half-brother must one day bring you to this point. Crime and passion are a bad mixture at best, George. When the passion is hate, nothing but evil and violence can result. It was shortly after Dr. Mitchell had pronounced his death sentence on your brother Barry, given him only a little more time to live. 
a few months at the most, he said, and sent him deeper into the seclusion of that place he called home, and deeper into the dark mood that seemed to find comfort only in that unhappy organ music of his. Mr. Val? Don't you care for my music? It's... It's your bedtime, that's all. Why, it's just 8.30. 8.30? Yes, it's 8.30 outside. But not here. In this house, it's midnight all the time. Aren't you being a little dramatic, Mr. Val? Perhaps I am. Sorry. Val, his music relaxes him. Relaxes him? It's killing him. Mr. Val, Barry, my poor boy. So it is my music. I'm sorry, Mr. McAllister. That's all right. But why don't you like it? I don't like it for what it's doing to you. Those depressing dirges you call music are as ugly as... as what you're waiting for. The girl is insane. No. No, I'm not. But I will be if I stay here any longer. Just a moment, Mr. Bell. It seems you have an opinion of me. I'd like to hear it. Yes. Yes, I have an opinion of you. Barry, let her go. Mr. Barry, you're exciting him, I warn you. His pass is very firm. And it'll take more than my opinion to get through that blanket of self-pity you've thrown around yourself. Self-pity? Isn't a dying man entitled even to that? A dying man? To be a dying man, you must first be a living man. You're not living. You have already abandoned life. I'm going to call Dr. Mitchell. I'll save you the trouble. I'll call Dr. Mitchell and ask him to send another nurse tonight. Hello? Dr. Mitchell? Ms. DeVos speaking. Dr. Mitchell, I'm quitting. Hello, Uncle Joe. Wrong? Oh, no. No, I think Ms. DeVal just wanted to report that her patient is feeling exceptionally well tonight. Quitting? No, I, uh, I think she wanted to uh, quit giving me the brown pills. The big ones. Can you imagine, Mr. Vaughn? He thought you were quitting. No, Uncle Joe. No, I think she's very happy here. And as for myself, I couldn't get along without her. She's very happy here. As for myself, I couldn't get along with her. I couldn't get along with her.
like my music, Miss Duvall? It's wonderful. But why aren't you in bed? I couldn't sleep. Then I did upset you. Yes. Yes, you did. I was thinking about you. There's one thing I didn't think about you, though. Of course, I didn't know it then. It was how lovely you would look coming down a staircase, wearing uh, just that. But, uh, Mr. McAllister, you're not supposed to. I... Not supposed to think about fair ladies and romance, Miss Duvall? That's exactly what I was thinking about. Carlotta. Yes, Mr. McAllister. I uh, know I have much to offer you except uh, companionship, money, love. It's not much to trade for the uh, happiness I know that you can give me during whatever time is left. Carlotta. Yes. Will you marry me? You poor, poor man. Now you'll never know I... I would have married you if you hadn't banished your name. Darling, it worked. You went for it. We'll be married Monday. Great. Where's the happy event going to take place? In his apartment here in New York? No, he wants to be married in the family chapel. Ah, oh, you wonderful. And I love you. Oh, it's about time you said so. Never doubt it. It was my lucky day when I met Nurse Duval at that French hospital. Nurse Duval. You know, you were the only good thing that happened to me in the whole war. It was my lucky day, too. Oh, it's good to be here if I could only stay forever. You poor kitten, you're tired, aren't you? No, I'm not tired exactly. At least not from the work. It was a strain, darling. It took such a long time, I was about ready to propose to him. Mm -mm, wouldn't have worked. I know the guy. I bet when the icing impressed on Miss Duval finally let him have that burst of temper, he fell off the organ bench. Practically. But I'm glad it's over. I wasn't joking when I told him I was going insane out there. I wouldn't mind a wife who was a little nuts, as long as she has a few million dollars. Come on. This calls for a celebration. Here, we'll bring to the future Mrs. McAllister. To the future which Mrs. McAllister, huh? The Mrs. George McAllister, of course. Most certainly not the uh, wealthy widow McAllister, yet. Don't, George. What was that for? Well, I don't know. It's just that he doesn't seem so bad. Well, you better take another look at him. Well, out of respect for your opinion, I'll send the biggest wreath I can find to his funeral. Please don't. It's, it's bad enough that our happiness depends on that. Is it our fault that he's got a body that doesn't want to stay wrapped around a penny-pinching, shriveled-up little soul of his any longer? No, no, of course not. And don't be angry with me, especially not just now when I have to leave. I'm not angry, kitten. But when am I going to see you again? It gets a little lonely up here. I'll see you as soon as I can. But, uh... See that you stay lonesome for me. Don't go looking for a new company. Ah, oh, kitten. You know your Georgie better than that. I certainly do know my Georgie. Oh, I'm just teasing. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe I'm the one that should be worrying. Just a little? No, darling. With me, you're my love. And that is my business. Trust me. I'll not mix the two. Only dazedly do I recall the next few days. The hours became a solid mold of anxiety. Anxiety over my ability to go through with what we had planned. Over the normal details attending marriage to a McAllister. 
And then it was Monday, the day of the wedding. And I stood before a mirror dressed as I had once hoped to be dressed for another wedding. All right. Just as pretty as a picture. There ain't no other word for it. Just as pretty as a picture. Oh, I'm glad. Now you'd better go and help Miss McAllister. Yes, ma'am. I sure will. I'll do just that. Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Something borrowed. I forgot. Something borrowed? <gasps> you startled me. Would this be suitable, do you think? It's quite horrible. Some might think it rather symbolic. I'm tired of your insinuations, Miss McAllister. If you have anything to say, then say it and be done with it. I have only one thing to say, Mr. Val. Don't marry my nephew. Your motives are obvious. I must ask you to leave my room. I have no desire to remain longer. After you have repeated our conversation to Barry, I imagine he will want me to move elsewhere. I'll not repeat it to him. And you may stay in this house for as long as you wish. I'm not afraid of you, Miss McAllister. That is a great mistake, Mr. Val. by that yes, doctor. Oh. Quite a bit different from the uniform I expected you to wear when I sent you out here. Haven't I seen Maggie, uh, Miss McAllister, wearing this? She thought I should wear it. Something borrowed. Nasty looking thing. Well, Miss Duval, <clears throat> I expect you know I didn't come up here to inspect the bride's wedding gown. I know why you came up here, Dr. Mitchell. Miss McAllister left no doubt in my mind that my marriage to Barry isn't meeting with general approval. So? I'll have to give you the same answer I gave her. Nothing is going to stop this wedding. <laughs> you don't have to be antagonistic toward me, Carlotta. I didn't come here to tell you not to marry him. I just wanted to tell you something about this man you're getting. You see, I've watched him grow up in this world. And now I'm faced with the unhappy task of supervising his departure from it. No one can know how I feel about the job. Thanks, George. Nice of you to help. And I thought it was nice of you to ask me to your wedding. No, oh, but I really wanted you here. See, I uh, figured that uh, you saw the happy, eager look on my face, contentment in my eyes, might encourage even you to settle down. Abandoned <laughs> hope, my dear brother. I consider marriage settling up, not down. Payment in full for all the fun you've had. Oh, then you don't approve of my getting married. Oh, now, wait a minute. Certainly I approve. I just hate to think of your widow. Practically a stranger getting all that beautiful money. Now, look, why don't you be a good guy and put me back in your will? Oh, no. No, I wouldn't think of it, George. Spoil our lovely relationship. You see, you're the only relative I have who isn't waiting for me to join our ancestors. Probably because you have nothing to gain by it. Uh, yeah, that's possible. But I certainly would like to be mentioned. Oh, you're mentioned. You get a dollar. A dollar? You could at least make it two. Care pad at a funeral. You're making a mess out of that tie. Let me fix it. This girl you're marrying, she's after your money, of course. She's going to get it, whether she's after it or not. 
If you think that's what she's marrying me for, you don't know her. That's right. But I've known a lot of women in my life. They're all alike. This girl's different, I tell you. Her smile when she gives it is an instant of complete happiness. The touch of her hands is a lifetime of pleasure. To make her my wife will be the achievement of all the beautiful dreams I've ever known. Oh, no. Never felt that way about a woman, huh? No. And in all apologies for your flowery description, there is no such woman. No? No. My dear Barry, well, it seems the bullet that got me in the leg was only making a detour and didn't have my name on it after all. But I, uh, let's see. Oh, here it is. Listen carefully. She's a nurse. This girl is different, I tell you. A smile when she gives it is an instant of complete happiness. The touch of her hands is a lifetime of pleasure. To make her my wife will be the achievement of all the beautiful dreams I've ever known. Ever heard those words before, huh? No. As ever, George. George who? You, Mr. McAllister. Oh, well. I memorized them. Thought they were so nice. What ever happened to her, George? I don't know. I guess she must be kicking around Paris someplace. It's too bad you lost track of her. What was her name now? I don't know. I don't remember. Why didn't you marry her? And what did you do with the money that I sent you for that particular purpose? I uh, got run over by a roulette wheel on the way to church. It's too bad you didn't marry her. Would have been good for you. You know, it still might be. I'm in a magnanimous mood, George. You find her and I'll stake you to any business you name. If she doesn't want to leave France, I'll put you in charge of our organization over there. Well, what do you say? <laughs> I'll think about it. Good, good. Oh, by the way, I uh, had the office make out a check. Sort of a... Wedding present in reverse. From me to you. Why, why? $10,000. Thanks, I said you can use it. That's what I figured. If getting married puts you in this kind of mood, we should do it more often. I hope you'll take my advice. About what? Find that girl and marry her. Yeah. I'll see if I can remember her name. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God, signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church, which holy estate Christ adorned and beautified with his presence and first miracle that he wrought in Cana of Galilee and is commended of St. Paul to be honorable among all men, and therefore is not by any to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, soberly, and in fear of God. Into this holy estate, these two persons present come now to be joined. If any man can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Barry, wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her so long as ye both shall live? I will. Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may so live together in this life that in the world to come you may have life everlasting. Amen. I wish you both much happiness. Thank you. Thank you.
Sorry. Me too. Good evening, Mr. McAllister. Any messages? No, sir, except your bill. I have it right here. This includes the current month. Well, get that word look off your face. I'm going to pay it. You are? Fine. Although, we never really worry about your account. I bet you don't. Who's the guy over there? I don't know. Put the receipt in my box, will you? Thank you, sir. With me, darling, you're my love and Barry's my business. Trust me, dear. What's on your mind? What is this, a stick-up? You know it's no stick-up. What is it, then? Every time I turn around, I see your face. It's my face. I'll take it where I please. If you don't want it messed up, quit trailing me. If anybody's trailing you, I don't know anything about it. I've got troubles of my own. They don't include you. Then what are you casing my apartment for? Your apartment? Is your name Helene? Do you work at the Chapeau Blanc? Have I got a yen for you? Helene? Helene Anderson? Yeah. You know her, that's your angle. No, I just heard she moved into the apartment. What are you watching her for? She's a dame that needs watching. Girlfriend. Sometimes I wonder, I've been out of town a while. Check it up before I check it in. Something like that. She wouldn't talk to me on the phone, just waiting around to find out why. Oh. Say, uh, I'm sorry I jumped you the way I did. I guess I'm a little nervous. Nervous? Yes. You see, I'm having a little romantic trouble myself. Oh. Now I know how you feel. I tell you what, let's go up to my apartment. We can have a couple of drinks. Do us both good. It's as good a place to wait as any. Okay. Make yourself at home. Right. Nice place you got here. Thanks. If I could support a layout like this, I wouldn't have any worries about Helene. What do you have to drink? Bourbon, you got any? Yeah. Helena, I take it likes nice things. Yeah. You ain't kidding. She likes anything that costs a lot of dough, if you know what I mean. When I got it, she even likes me. That ain't often. I don't know what kind of trouble you're having with that dame of yours, Bet she ain't two-timing you. What makes you so sure? Her face. This dame's got class. That's not the girl. That's not the one, huh? No. That's not the dame I saw coming in here a couple of days ago? And once before that? No. I haven't seen that girl since I left Paris. Oh. All I know, she's still there. French dame, huh? Yes, that's right. That autograph. I 
thing she wrote on the picture. It's in English. Well, what about it? A lot of people in France write English. What are you so jumpy about, pal? I'm not jumpy. Oh. What's keeping you from your torch? Oh. Married, huh? Yes, that's right. She's married. Say, Ernie, do me a favor, will you? Go in the kitchen and get me some ice. Ice? Yeah, over there. Oh. Uh -huh. Want to call her, huh? Hello? George! What are you calling for this time of night? I just wanted to apologize for running away from the wedding and reception. Would you put Barry or my brand new sister-in-law on the phone? No. I'll give them your message. They've retired. I see. Good night, Aunt Maggie. That's the trouble with having a girlfriend who's married. If a man answers, you gotta hang up. Tell you what, Ernie. What? Let's go see Helene. Helene? Yes, Miss Anderson. You said her name was Helene, didn't you? Why should you want to go see her? You said you didn't know her. Well, I just feel like going someplace. I feel as though I owe you a little entertainment. Oh. Come on, take you both to dinner. She's working, singing. All right. We'll go there and wait till she's through. Between the two of us, we can convince her that Ernie Hicks is a man of importance. Oh. Love me or leave me, let me be lonely. say that I do. She had a nice big smile for you. That was for you. Gold cufflinks you were in and the good stuff in that suit. She'll tell you the price of both of them from 50 yards away. Annie, you're better. You think she'll join us? After one gander at you, there's no doubt about it. Hello, Ernie. Gee, I'm glad to see you. I sure missed you. Oh, excuse me, uh, Miss Anderson, I want you to meet my friend, Mr. McAllister. How do you do? 
do you do? Sit down, won't you? I sure missed you, kid. You said that already. Why wouldn't you see me when I came back to town? I told you over the phone I've been too busy with rehearsals. I've heard it said about great singers, Miss Anderson, that when rehearsals come in the door, romance flies out of the window. Or was it vice versa? Yes, I guess it was vice versa. I guess. Anyway, it's nice to have you join us. Will you have dinner with us? Sure, I'd love to. Oh, swell. This time the dinner's on him, next time it's on me. Fine. After tonight, I was going on a diet anyway. Say, where did he pick you up? I didn't pick him up. He picked me up. That's right. We're going to have a lot of fun together. We've got a lot in common, Mr. McAllister and I. What's he talking about? Oh, you're drunk and I'm hungry. I think we better let Mr. McAllister order. The menu's printed in French. It, he had a French girl in Paris. How nice. Oh, you better order some champagne. Goes good with French food. Thank you for a very pleasant evening. It's been fun, especially meeting you. My pleasure. OK for a nightcap? No, thanks. Past my bedtime. I could use one. It's past my bedtime, too. Good night, Mr. McAllister. Good night. See you around, Ernie. Well, I'm going to walk up, Ernie. I'll take the elevator. Say, Ernie. Yeah? About that news item. You can understand why I said it was a different girl. Sure, sure. Well, now that she's married, it's all over, and, well, you know... It's all over? Naturally. Oh. And I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention seeing her come up here. To anybody. Consider it forgotten. Not a boy, any thanks. Here's something I uh, think it might help you out with Helene. No, 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 no. I wouldn't think of it. I'll be seeing you. It's me. Hi, neighbor. Howdy, ma'am. Long time no see. Well, I decided I'd have that nightcap alone, but when I looked in my bar, no whiskey. So uh, I just ran up to borrow a cup of bourbon for my neighbor. What are you looking for? Mice. Will you drink it here or take it with you? I think I'll drink it here. I've been wanting that all evening. Couldn't wait any longer. Me too. Really? Really. What are you looking for? My picture. Where have you got it? In the... No. It's not in the kitchen, either. It's right there on the desk. I just left it there till I got a, a frame for it. I forget you. It's a good thing it was in the drawer when Ernie was here. Why didn't you tell me you knew him? Ernie? Yes, Ernie. I forgot. Of course, you know he's slightly jealous. Oh, he gives me a pain. Say, how did you ever get mixed up with him? I don't know. Felt sorry for him, I guess. He's nuts about you. Oh, he's nuts, period. But he's a troublemaker, and if you take my advice, you'll brush him fast. So? Why do you let him hang around? I won't, Georgie, if, if you don't want me to. I wouldn't take the responsibility. Just for that, I think I'll take this and drink it alone. Good idea, kitten. But I didn't mean it, George. I, I don't want to go. You need your beauty rest. Good night, kitten, and happy hangover. Celia, what's so interesting out those windows? Mr. and Ms. McAllister, they're down by the sea, that beautiful old sea on the high cliff. On the point? Yes, sir. Ain't it wonderful, Miss Margaret, the change has come over him since he found her? Ain't it, though? 
That love bug sure is a wonderful little creature. He sure is. He's one of God's chosen creatures, that little old love bug. <laughs> If you finish down here, you'd better start with the bedrooms. Yes, um. And don't forget to check on the linens. Yes, um. <laughs> that little old love bug is still all right. <laughs> Not so close, it frightens me. Don't worry, I'll be careful. Fall down there didn't kill me to climb back up wood. Then step back a little. You love this. The sea and the cliffs and the rocks, don't you? I do again, now that you're here. Say, by the way, you're, uh, you're not the fisherman's little girl that used to play over these rocks with me. No. Why? Do you have the same effect on me? Was she a blonde? I don't know. Her hair was always so full of seaweed. Yeah, we built beautiful, wonderful air castles, my little beachcomber and I. I was going to buy her the whole world, starting out with a marble palace and a golden yacht. But she was a realist. Decided she'd rather start with a bracelet. So I went without my lunch for a whole month and bought the bracelet. Mm, I bet she loved it. She never saw it. George showed up that summer, and I lost my little beach comb. George stole your girl? Oh, sure. George always stole my girls. You know, by a peculiar coincidence, I uh, just happened to have that bracelet with me. Wear it, darling. It's wonderful to regain something you've loved and lost as a child. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes, I do. How? Oh. Because of... Because of Henry. Oh, you had a little boyfriend, huh? No. French Porter. <laughs> I hated the taxi cab that killed him. No wonder you dislike George for taking her from you. Dislike George? Whatever gave you that idea? I... I don't know. I thought... Because he's shiftless and lazy, plays too much and works too little? Because he took my girls away from me? For that? I should dislike him? Oh, nothing of the sort. I've always liked George. He's got away with him. Oh, I've always tried to get him settled down. Almost succeeded once. When was that? When he was overseas. Got a bullet in his leg. Fell head over heels in love with the nurse that took care of me. Wanted to marry her. At least that's what he wrote me. Of course, I'm always meddling in George's affairs. Even on our wedding day, I offered to set him up in any business he'd name. If he'd find that girl, marry her. He wouldn't die, I suppose. No. Same old George. Couldn't he remember her name? Oh, darling, you're getting cold. Here I am boring you with a family skeleton. Come on, I'll take you back to the house. Oh, Barry, I... I've been thinking about your New York apartment. I'd like to fix it up a bit in case we get to use it more often. Well, that would be all right, but... You'd rather I didn't? Oh, no, of course not. Go ahead and do it if you enjoy it. I'll have Hannah bring the car. I told Barry I was going shopping. Hammer brought me in. He didn't bring you here? No, of course not. I had him let me off at Barry's apartment. Then I took a cab. Smart girl. Know how much I missed you? What's the matter? I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I'm upset. About what? 
You don't mean to tell me that my dear brother isn't feeling well, I hope. He's feeling all right. But, well, George, he told me some things about you and I had to see you. Oh, I know I'm being foolish. Tell me I'm being foolish, darling. But they aren't so. That I'm just upset because I got too lonesome for you. If they bother you, kitten, they aren't so. He said you wanted to marry me in France. You? Well, he said a nurse in France. I knew he meant me. Well, say that so. If I hadn't been broke... But he sent you money. So what? Then he did send you money. Yeah, he sent a little. But why didn't we get married? What did you do with it? I don't know. Bought you some poses or something, I guess. Wasn't enough to think about. But we didn't need much. Just a little and each other would have been enough. Now, look, honey, you're making something out of nothing. You're letting him fill your head with a lot of doubts about me when you know he hates my guts. But he doesn't, George. He likes you. Look, honey, I've known him a lot longer than you have. He doesn't hate you, George. He doesn't. All right, kitten. All right. Anything you say. But you gotta let me run the show. Have I ever steered you wrong? No. No, of course not. Then you gotta trust me. Will you? I do, of course I do. It's just that it's more difficult than I thought it would be out there. I know. It isn't exactly easy in here either. But you mustn't doubt me. I'm just confused. And I'd better be going. You want to go? But I've got to. I'd like to have you stay, but I've got to change and go out. I won't interfere with your dressing. Got something I want to talk to you about. All right, what do you want to talk about? I'm in a hurry. Going out, huh? Yeah. Oh. Well, what is it? How many bedrooms you got here? One. Oh. Is that your idea of something important to talk about? Thought I might move in with you. Second thought, my taste a little snappier than this. What makes you think I'd let you move in with me? Well, seeing as we're in business together, I figured we might as well live together. Since when are we in business together? Since your brother's wife parked her car in front of your brother's apartment downtown and took a cab up here, I wouldn't if I were you, Georgie. I should have spotted you for a stinking blackmailer the first time I saw you. I wasn't a blackmailer then. You'd almost say it was your idea. What was being followed? That and Helene. Helene? She won't have anything to do with me. Seems she's got a yen for somebody else. I can't help you there. No? No. Oh. I think you can. When I got money, Helene feels different towards me. I don't get you. I offered you some money the other night. Why didn't you take it? Small money, Georgie. Small money. You know, the minute I laid eyes on you, I knew I was in business. Big business. That shocks you, doesn't it? You'd be amazed how talkative the servants are out at your brother's place. Why didn't you tell me you only had a couple of months to live? Or maybe less now that he's married to your Carlotta.
I got too much money invested in you, Georgie. Pour me one, too. My mind was a welter of confusion after leaving your apartment that afternoon. It was the first time I had ever really doubted you, George. But I doubted myself, too. But I was frightened as I approached the house. I felt I couldn't possibly face its occupants. And to my mind, the very house itself scowled disapproval of me. I felt the wind shriek its hatred. And the ocean, always angry and threatening, seemed to be reaching for me. Trying to drag me by force from this place which Barry loved. And in which I was an imposter. I started for the house. An impulse made me turn. And then, Go to the chapel. As I stood inside the door, I looked at the place where we were married. Barry and I. Then I seemed to hear bells. And a voice. I pronounce that they are man and wife. I knelt there for a long time, but peace would not come to me. I am sure that if I prayed, my prayers were so confused, I wondered if even God could understand them. I was about to leave when there was an awful crash. hearing our wedding music in my imagination as I had heard the bells and the words of the minister. Then I realized the music I was hearing was coming from the house, but the sudden peace and clarity in my mind were not imagined. You weren't in my thoughts, George, as I hurried from the chapel. I went through the doorway of the house my house and for the first time it welcomed me it was then i knew i had to tell barry about myself the thought instead of frightening me brought me comfort please don't stop hey do you know that the room lit up just now when you Tell me, what's the cause of this new radiance? Clear conscience. A wife with a clear conscience? I never heard of such a thing. It's the clear conscience I'm about to have. Barry, you really don't know much about this new wife of yours. Doesn't that ever bother you? No. Say, what is this, a confession? Yes. Well, that probably means I'll have to bear my lurid past. <laughs> no dice. Please be serious, dear. Serious? About your past? Just some of it, Perry. There are some things you have a right to know. You may not like me quite as much or at all, but that's a chance I have to take. I don't think I could live with myself Say, if I... Say, you are serious, aren't you? Yes. 
Carlotta. I know about you. You know what? All that I want to know. All that's important. You see, darling, every man has a picture of the woman he loves. Mine is a picture of a pretty little girl that grew into a lovely young woman. Put on this earth for the sole purpose of bringing happiness into the life of Barry McAllister. Humor me, Carl. Let me look at my picture. See what I see. But it's not exactly the truth. Hmm, of course it's not. You're such a good little girl, you want to tell me all about the time you held hands with a neighbor boy. Don't do it. I know it may sound funny to you, but... Well, even that... Just don't do it. That was Barry. I looked at him with new eyes then and in the days that followed. I even looked at him for all the things he had found hateful, George. And I looked in vain. They weren't there. All I could find was kindness, gentleness, and appreciation for the little I gave. What are you clucking about? Hotel service. Very bad. Very dusty. Well, you've done all the dusting up here. Finish it up and get out, will you? Yes, sir. All finished. Wait a minute. Chang? Yes, sir? I want to give you a bit of advice. If you ever fall in love, admit it to yourself right away. Don't wait until it's almost too late. Oh, that could not happen to Chang. Why not? Haven't you ever been in love? Oh, yes. In love many times. Once with girl. Hurt too much. Now Chang fall in love only with roast duck, weekly paycheck, uh, riding streetcars, and going to movies. It's a sound idea. Only it won't help me any. Confucius have many helpful words for people in all kind of trouble, except love. For them, he have only sympathy. Chang would not like to be in love with one so lovely and so good as her face showed this one to be. Why? The better she is, the harder to lose. What makes you think I lost her? Someday, everybody lose everybody. That is why Chang never fall in love with girl again. If she mean all the world to you, and you lose her, then you have lost the whole world. If she mean more than life to you, and you lose her, then you have lost all of life. But if she mean more than your soul to you, and you lose her, then you have lost your own soul. Confucius say that? Maybe Confucius. Maybe Walter Winchell. Chang remember only the words. I go. Oh, I'll get it. Hi, neighbor. Hello, Helene. Confucius would be much confused. You shouldn't have come today. I'm in a stinking mood. Good. I'll get stinking with you. I don't mean drunk. Oh. I just don't feel like entertaining anybody. <laughs> well, then I'll entertain you. Come on. Tell the neighbor lady what my big baby's sulking about. I'm not sulking. I just feel like being alone. Can't you understand that? Ooh, you really are in a nasty mood. But I don't mind. Oh. So 
this is the reason my picture stays in the desk drawer, hmm? Don't be silly. That's only a girl I knew a long time ago. Don't you be silly. I read the social columns as well as the funnies, dear. This picture isn't as good as the one in the papers when she married your brother. All right. So she's my brother's wife. What's wrong with that? For George, with all my love. A very chummy family, aren't you? Get out of here, you little tramp, before I throw you out. I'll go. And I'll remember what you called me to. And while you're at it, remember not to come back. George, I didn't mean anything. I want to stay. Well, I meant it. Darling, please try to understand. I was jealous and... Well, you're the one guy that never called me a tramp. Well, beat it if you don't want to hear it again from the same guy. Oh, you'll be sorry for this, George. Anderson's the name. I don't believe you've met before. No, we haven't. But we have a, a mutual friend, and I thought we should know each other. A mutual friend? Yeah. Georgie. Georgie. You mean George McAllister? I don't mean George Washington. Perhaps, Miss Anderson, you'd better tell me just why you're here. Sure, why not? I just came up to tell you that uh, Georgie is all yours. Or, or didn't you know we'd been dividing him up to now? I still don't know what you mean. Oh, snap out of it. I know you're French, but you've got a pretty firm grip on this country's language. <laughs> it's too bad you don't know more about the men. He's a stinker and you can have him. Is that plain? George is my husband's half-brother. I'm not interested in his personal life. Half-brother, that's all, hmm? Yes. A George, with all my love, Carlotta. Oh, and I, I hope you forgive me. I, uh, I broke the glass in the picture. Oh. So this is blackmail, then? No, it isn't blackmail. It's just that I want to see a few other people get what's coming to them for a change. And I intend to do it, too. Carlotta! Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I didn't know you had company. That's all right, dear. This is Miss Anderson, my husband. How do you do, Mr. McAllister? How do you do? She, uh, Helene, just learned where I was living, and I figured she'd be very happy to see me. An old friend, eh? Fine. Are you a nurse, too, Miss Anderson? Why, uh... You might say that we've taken care of the same patients, hmm, Carlotta? Yes. Good. I wish more of her friends would come. What's the matter, darling? Aren't you feeling well? You look pale. Pale? Oh, it's your imagination, dear. Just the same. I'd better have Dr. Mitchell take a look at you the next time he's here. Well, I imagine you girls have a great deal to talk about, so... Yes. Yes, I could talk all day. Well, I'll be running along, then. Goodbye, dear. Nice meeting you, Miss Anderson. Come see Carlotta again real soon. Please do. Well, I, I guess I'll be running along, too. Miss Anderson? Yes? Thank you. For telling you about George? No. Oh, for not telling him. Well, why should I? He's a nice guy. You ought to take good care of him. Well, happy, happy. Hello? Hello. 
Hello. You know who this is? Yes. Tina! Just a minute. Yes, George. What do you want? Where have you been? Why haven't you talked to me? Why haven't you been in town? I... I've been busy. This is dangerous and foolish. I know it's dangerous, but I've got to talk to you. This is important. We're in trouble. You must, Carlotta. It's important. Why not this afternoon? No, it's impossible. No, I can't. Tina! I can't talk anymore. All right, I'll try. Yes. Yes, tomorrow afternoon. Yes. All right. I promise. You didn't ask her for the dough. Over the phone? Don't be stupid. Suppose she can't get the money. I won't. She can and she will for you. Especially when she knows how important it is. Why do you have to have it now? Why can't you wait? It's Celine. All of a sudden, she's changed. She came back to me. Do you understand that? I told her I was coming into some dough. An inheritance, I said it was. She agreed to marry me right away, tomorrow. Then we take off on our honeymoon. You better get me that dough, George. Fast. I'll see what I can do. I can't promise anything. Oh? Maybe I better contact her direct. Wait. I'll get it. Okay, George. Your call upset me. But I was certain your plea of trouble was simply an excuse to see me. I had no intention of keeping my promise to visit your apartment the next day. Christmas Day. I was determined not to see you again. I never wanted to. Come in. Hmm, how pretty you look. Merry Christmas, darling. It's not Christmas yet, silly. It is for you. I want to give you your present. But why don't you put it under the tree? I can't wrap packages, especially this one. Henry. Darling. He seems to think the same about you. Oh, another thing, darling. I, uh, I invited George out for our little Christmas Eve party. George? He called me at the office. Seemed kind of lonesome, so being Christmas and everything, I asked him out. Merry Xmas. Mm -hmm. And that's a fact. play Reverend McDonald. You must have a number that'd be appropriate. I sure have, and it'll be a pleasure. Good. Thank 
driving. Merry Christmas, George. Be merry at Christmas if you let me dance with your wife. Now, Maggie, steps on my feet. You're so gallant, George. You can step on my feet for a while, darling. you wanted to talk to me. There was trouble. What, what kind of trouble? We're being blackmailed. Blackmailed? By who? Oh, by a guy by the name of Bernie Hicks. You wouldn't know him. He saw you coming to my apartment a couple of times. Started checking. Checking? When? A long time ago. I thought I could handle it. I didn't want to worry you. I knew it would be harder for you to stay out here if you thought someone was watching us. Then why tell me now? Because we are whipped, Carlotta. Can't you see, when that blackmailer learned our plan, we no longer had a plan. Oh, I've lost the money that I know. But I don't want to lose you, too. What do you want me to do? Leave here. Tonight. Now. Leave here? Why, I... I can't. Why can't you? Are you trying to tell me you love Barry? Don't you want to come back? To me? He's wonderful to me. I... I won't hurt him. Maybe you won't, but I might. You're mine. You belong to me. And you're going to come back to me, no matter what it takes. You understand? Well, what about it? I'll... Uh, let me think. Oh, there you are. Darling, some of the guests are leaving. I knew you'd want to say good night. Yes, yes, of course. George was just saying good night, too. Oh, nonsense. You're staying over for breakfast with us, aren't you, old man? Sure. Sure. I was afraid you weren't going to ask me for a moment. I couldn't think of going to sleep. I knew the thoughts that were going through your head. And I was afraid of what you might do to Barry. The last vestige of my regard for you died when you told me of the blackmailer. For you were the only blackmailer, George. You were trying to blackmail me into returning to you. Your words kept hammering in my head. Maybe you won't, but I might. You're mine. You belong to me. And you're going to come back to me, no matter what it takes. You understand? sleepy. Why aren't you asleep? Oh, I know. You couldn't without kissing little Georgia goodnight. I... I was nervous and worried. And you had to kiss little Georgia goodnight, didn't you? Yes, yes. That too. George, 
Do you still carry that gun with you? My little baby? Why, sure. Every place I go. Let me have it. Why? I'd like to keep it for you. <laughs> mm -mm. I'll give it back to you tomorrow. Really, I will. Mm. You worried about Barry? I... I just don't want anything to happen to either of you. You're in love with him, aren't you? Oh, George, why don't you go to bed? I want a straight answer. Are you in love with him? Well? No. No, George. That's good. Because if you had fallen in love with him, I don't think baby here would like it very much. <laughs> but it's silly of me to think that you could fall in love with anybody else. There's no one quite like Georgie. Don't drink any more, George. Please go to bed. You do want to come back. Don't you? Next morning, my decision had been made. I suddenly realized that you would kill him before you would give me up. But I was returning to you without my heart and soul. I waited until Barry left and then wrote him a short note. I couldn't tell him very much. Certainly not the truth. Not after he had said... You're such a good little girl, you probably want to tell me about the time you held hands with a neighbor boy. We talk to him. Oh, I, I know it may sound funny to you, but, well, even that, just won't do. And so I blame my own weakness as a person unable to find happiness and asked him to forgive me for running away. For he is such a good man, father. You understand why I must do this to him. Comfort him and make him strong and well. And bless him, Father. Bless him every minute of every day. And, dear Father, Help me just a little bit, too. Please. Please. Amen. <coughs> that was a lovely prayer, Carlotta. Dr. Mitchell, I, I didn't know you were here. Forgive me, I... I started to speak, and then I didn't want to interrupt. But how do you happen to be in here? Oh, to tell the truth, I often sit in here for a moment when I'm out this way. Nice, quiet place to write prescriptions. Remember my Latin better in church. Oh, well, I'll, 
I'll leave you alone. No. Sit down a minute, please. I was going to the house. I wanted to talk to you about Barry. He isn't worse. No. You must have prayed for him many times before, Carlotta, because he's much better. Much better. I'm so glad, Dr. Mitchell. Are you? Of course I am. Well, that's fine. Because when you were praying up there a minute ago, I almost got the impression you were leaving him, going away. Why, Carlotta? I thought you were happy here. I thought you meant this marriage. There are reasons, Dr. Mitchell. I... You don't know. I can't tell you. I know you've done wonders for your husband. What else don't I know? Dr. Mitchell, I, for many years, George and I... I know. I know about you and George. You do? Quite a while. A doctor has to know a bit about his favorite nurse. But, but why didn't you say anything before? Why? I considered it, yes. I was just about to speak up when I looked at Barry's face and I realized he had found the medicine he needed. And, well, I, I love Barry as my own son. Dr. Mitchell, I'm so confused. You see, I love him, too. Then why are you going back to George? He's desperate. I'm afraid of what he might do to Barry. Did he threaten you? Yes. Ah, he'd carry it out, too. Well, that leaves just one thing for you to do. What? Uncle Joe's going to recommend a sea voyage for his patient with his wife. Take him away, Carlotta, for six months, a year, ten years if he's having fun. The Queen Elizabeth sails New Year's Eve. Be on it. With Barry? Is he well enough? For his honeymoon. Under your care, it looks as though he'll outlive the lot of us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Merely making sure that Celia cleaned properly. I'm taking care of Barry's room. I thought perhaps you were leaving. I was never more sure that I'm staying. Until it was burning, did my happiness return. And even then, it was happiness overshadowed by foreboding. There was reason for foreboding. Barry told me later that you wanted to see him in his New York apartment before we sailed, and that he had agreed to meet you, alone. Then I knew I must write this letter. I'm pleading for my husband's life and our happiness, George. But even as I write, I seem to know it will do no good. There is a great fear in me of what will happen when you and Perry meet. I beg of you, have mercy, George. Late, kitten. A little late. You all right, Mr. McAllister? Why you call police? I'm a sad girl. I expected you, but not so soon. He's hurt. We should call doctor. No, I'm all right. We uh, found that guy. You were right. He is quite dead. Hey, can't you see? He's sick. You're not kidding. He's sick, all right. 
Got a bullet hole clean through him. If you want to ask him any questions, you better do it here and fast. I'll call a doctor and an ambulance. Please, Mr. McAllister. You'll be all right. You tear your coat. Uh, shut up. Try to remember, McAllister. I hate to make you talk now, but some things we got to know. Why did you kill him? What is the fight about? What Homicide. happened? Homicide. Send a doctor on an ambulance over to 150 West 59th. Yeah, and don't spare the horses. Uh, try to think, McAllister. What happened? What happened? I tore my coat. Yes, I tore my coat. Although the tear in the coat had nothing to do with my errand there tonight. I wasn't thinking about anything when I stepped into that corridor except the job I had come there to do. He crossed me for the last time. Nice layout. I got it for Helene. You're giving me the dough to pay for it. Money? I didn't bring any. I told you tonight was the deadline. I wasn't kidding. I know, pal. But things have happened. Our plans have changed a bit. My sense of humor ain't so good tonight. My plans haven't changed. Now quit stalling. Give me the money now. I'll have to swim for it. Mrs. McAllister and her husband are sailing tonight on the Queen Elizabeth. To be gone a long, long time. Oh. Where are you going? To the docks. To wish him bon voyage. Snap out of it. I got a couple of more questions. No, please. Mr. McAllister answering questions elsewhere. No. Happy New Year. 
Love, George. Happy New Year, darling. <laughs>